Hi everybody, I'm Erin and this is Waiting Moose where I talk about books. I am participating in Vlogmas this year which means I get to make a video every day of December. At least that's my plan and my goal, we'll see how it goes. Today I want to talk to you about holiday giving. My husband and I are we do okay for ourselves and several years ago I, I got introduced to, to the idea by a co-worker of giving back to the community at Christmas and I've done a lot of that over the years. I've also done volunteering throughout the year in various different forms but I do try to give at Christmas particularly. I'm lucky in that our office does a giving initiative, two giving initiatives actually every year and this year they did Adopt a Family and the Food Bank. Our department actually got our own family to do for the Adopt a Family and I was so excited because when I went to look at the list all of the kids and the mom wanted books. I decided to sign up to get all of the all of them books. Uh, someone else had already signed up to buy the little girl books so I was left with the rest of the family, which there's a mom and three boys. I wanted to share with you guys today the books that I bought for that family and then after I'm done talking about that I want to get back to just giving back at Christmas. We're going to start with these because I had so much fun buying them. I went to Costco because I love Costco. Where I live we don't really have a bookstore, not even an indigo in my town. I'm going to start out with the mother. I bought two books for the mother. I know that as a single mother she probably doesn't get a lot of time to read. I wasn't sure what to buy for someone in that situation. So I went with a book I've seen a lot on a lot of booktube channels lately and it's It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I have read one of Colleen Hoover's young adult books before and I, I enjoyed it and I believe that this is going to be a good choice for the mother and hopefully she appreciates it. And the other book, hi Bailey, that I got for the mother is called The German Girl by Armando, Armando Lucas Correa. This book I saw and I started reading the back of it and it is for me an ideal book. I hope that she feels the same way when she gets it but it is about World War II of course. I just want to read a, a bit off the back. It is published in 2016. It's translated from Spanish but this book just sounded so good and I think that it's you'll be hearing more about it in the future. Before everything changed, young Hannah Rosenthal lived a charmed life. But now, in 1939, the streets of Berlin are draped with red, white, and black flags, and her family is no longer welcome in the places that once felt like home. Hannah and her best friend, Leo Martin, make a pact. Whatever the future has in store for them, they'll meet it together. Hope appears in the form of the SS St. Louis Transatlantic Liner, offering Jews safe passage out of Germany to Havana. After a frantic search to obtain visas, the Rosenthal's and the Martins depart on the luxurious sh ship bound for Havana. Life on board the St. Louis is like a surreal holiday for the refugees, but soon ominous rumors from Cuba undermine the passengers' fragile sense of safety. The ship that was once their salvation seems likely to become their doom. Seven decades later in New York City, on her 12th birthday, Anna Rosen receives a strange package from an unknown relative in Cuba, her great aunt Hannah. Its contents will inspire Anna and her mother to travel to Havana to learn the truth about their family's mysterious and tragic past, a quest that will help Anna understand her place and her purpose in the world. And this is based on a true story. That cover synopsis really made me want to read it. I was really tempted to actually sit down and read it before I took it <laughs> and donated it, which just seems like a bad idea. So I did not, I have not read this yet, but I will probably be going back to Costco to get another copy of it for myself because it just sounds so awesome. So that was the two books that I bought for the mother. And then it went a little while. The boys that I'm buying books for are seven, eight, and 12. I believe I bought these Wings of Fire for the 12 year old. This is a box set of five books and the books are called Brightest Night. Oh wait, that's dark book five. Wings of Fire, The Dragonette Prophecy, The Lost Heir, The Hidden Kingdom, The Dark Secret, and The Brightest Night. I like fantasies. I think, especially for boys, fantasies are the thing to do. Maybe science fiction, but fantasy for sure. 
And these are about dragon. So what could go wrong? I don't know if any of you have read these. I have not. And that was what was tough for me because I was buying books that I've not read before for the most part. And that made me nervous. Standing in Costco, I pulled out my phone, as you do. <sighs> Hold up Goodreads. So the first book in the series is rated 4.41 stars on Goodreads. I thought that was a good start. It was published in 2012. The seven dragon tribes have been at war for generations, locked in an endless battle over an ancient lost treasure. A secret movement called the Talons of Peace is determined to bring an end to the fighting with the help of the prophecy, a foretelling that calls for great sacrifice. Five dragon nets are collected to fulfill the prophecy raised in a hidden cave and enlisted against their will to end the terrible war. So that's a brief little glimpse. I do hope he enjoys them and that they get passed on to his brothers once they get a little older. I hope some of you have read these and can tell me more about them. Should I go back and get a set for me? For the eight-year-old, I indulged my nerd, my inner nerd. I went with Star Wars, Jedi Academy Trilogy box set. So this box set includes the Jedi Academy, which is the first book, and then Jedi Academy Return of the Padawan, which is the second book, and finally Jedi Academy The Phantom Bully. These are written by Jeffrey Brown and they look like they'd be a lot of fun. I believe they're graphic novels and I think that they are perfect for an eight-year-old boy. I hope he does not have them and I hope he loves them because I think I would put in the cart before I knew what other books I was gonna get and then I just had to figure out who was getting what. And finally, every year Costco has these, so I'm a little concerned that I might have made a mistake. It's heavy. <laughs> I couldn't resist just because I love Roald Dahl so much. This was like, there were so few left that this, the, the plastic is coming off this one. I was, I was disappointed I couldn't get one in better shape. It's, it's going to be a great box set anyway. This includes the BFG, Matilda, Ezio Trot, George's Marvelous Medicine, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, Danny the Champion of the World, The Magic Finger, The Witches, The Giraffes and the Pelly and Me, The Twits, Boy, James and the Giant Peach, and Going Solo. I thought this was a really good collection of some of the better Roald Dahl books. It's a big collection. It was actually cheaper than the other two sets. I love, I love Charlie and Chocolate Factory. I love Charlie and the Great Get Glass Elevator. I've read, I think I've read James and the Giant Peach. I've read The Fantastic Mr. Fox. So of these, like I've read several of these books and I just think, I hope he agrees with me, that the family agrees with me, but I think that these are classics that will be readable forever. I don't know if any of you have read any of these, like the Wings of Fire series or the Jedi Academy series or some of the Royal Dull books that I have not read, but I'd love to hear about them if you have read about them, read them. I wanted to talk a bit more about giving at the holidays. I like giving back. Now, in the past, I have done some crazy things. I have fostered dogs for an animal rescue near where I used to live. I fostered three dogs with them before I got super attached to one and I cried when he was adopted. I cried a lot. That was my last fostering experience because I realized that I just was not prepared for that if I had a dog that I really liked. I volunteered at food banks. I've donated to food banks. Last year at Christmas, it wasn't an Adopt-A-Family event that we did. It was a charity that took stuff in and, and redistributed it to families. And they gave you a list of, of desirable items. And I went a little nuts then too because I bought a lot of stuff. I bought a lot of stuff for kids. Um, I don't really want to say, it's not about how much I spent, but I went nuts. The reality is I don't have kids. I have pets have decided to take some of that money and time I used to spend shopping for my family, use it to help out someone who maybe isn't as well off as I am. This year it was great because I got to buy books. I'm also going to be donating money to the Calgary Humane Society, which is where I adopted my dog Hank from. We adopted him a year and a half ago. I am so very happy that we did. He's such a fantastic dog. I actually adopted this critter here and another cat from another humane society in a different city when I lived somewhere else. Especially right now with the way that the economy is where I live, it's not good. There are a lot of people that have lost their jobs. We have a lot of of really stressed people around and I want to be able to help 
as do what I can to help. I understand that the Humane Society, the Calgary Humane Society, has seen a huge increase in the number of animals that are being surrendered because families can't afford them anymore because one or bo both um, income earners have lost their jobs. What they're doing this year, they are doing stuff a pooch pad, I think it's called. So they've got rooms where the dogs are kept that are up for adoption and they're, they're quite large rooms. I mean, my dog is 110 pounds and he was in one of these rooms comfortably with a bed and, and space to roam around, like a little bit of space to roam around. So they want to fill two of those with stuff for their dog, for all of the animals. So um, dog food, cat food, toys, bedding. They have a whole list on the Calgary Humane Society webpage. And I will probably be donating. I don't know if I'm gonna donate money or if I'm just gonna go and donate things for them. I really do believe in what they're doing. And it's very sad to me that a lot of people have to give up their animals. I also understand that the Calgary, uh, Calgary Food Bank has a pet food bank as well. I don't know, you'd have to call them to find out if they are accepting donations to that or what, you know, what they're accepting, but they are trying to help people keep their animals if the, the problem is just keeping them fed. I just think those are two great things to do. I also donated this year, there was a drive for the food bank that came about two months ago. They came through and they picked up donations for the food bank, so I cleaned out my pantry, and I'm not talking about expired food. I had a bunch of dried pasta, I had a bunch of canned tuna, stuff that I know I can easily go and buy again. I cleaned out my, my pantry a bit. And my local food bank, again, is looking for donations of a lot of different things. I will probably go do some shopping for them and drop it off just because I think that I would want someone to do that for me if I was in that situation. In a lot of cases, these people aren't unemployed because of something they've done. Tell me about what you do. Do you have any sort of pet charities? <laughs> My pet charities are actually pet charities, typically. Please let me know in the comments um, down below if there's anything specific you do at this time of year. This is a good way for us to bring awareness to things that need to be done and need to be um, supported. No better time than at the holidays. I think next year I'm going to try to do it throughout the year rather than just at the holidays. I will still participate in my office in giving initiatives, but I think throughout the year I should be doing more to support my community as well. Again, my name is Erin, this is Waiting Moose, and I hope to see you again. Thank you!